What's up guys? Welcome back to my channel. So this week I'm going to share with you a brand new client's hair transformation. So she came into me wanting to do some gray blending. In the past she's done um, highlights and you can see she has some base color in there that has tried to cover her grays but also blend it but she felt like it was fading kind of warm. She didn't like how uh, the contrast between her virgin and the color that it faded to. So our goal today is to transition her into something that will grow out a little bit softer um, and not make her feel like she has too many tones in her hair. Something like these gold photos that, that she's showing me right now. So I'm going to start in the back nape area and I always like to detail the hairline here. Um, especially if their hair is longer because this section right here is actually part of the bottom muddy piece So I always like to detail this part here. The only really time that I might skip it is if um, They have like really short hair and it's really hard to grab the hairs there But generally I do like to focus on this area to start off with and then I um, go ahead and continue the regular placement that I'm going to be doing for the rest of the head. So right now I'm taking slices and again I took a diagonal back right above that um, detailed hairline foil and I'm just going to be doing a slice here. So in our consultation she told me that she wanted to do something that wasn't too blonde and was going to blend a lot better with her gray pattern and by looking at her gray pattern she really doesn't have a ton of gray in my opinion i definitely have had clients who have more than 50 percent but in my opinion i feel like she definitely has less than 50 percent gray i mean she does have some areas maybe around her hairline that might have a bit more which is normal but because she doesn't have a ton, our focus today is going to be doing a placement where less is more. And this is going to be showing you how I do my normal placement um, on her, but kind of cater it to her gray pattern and to her hair texture and hair type so that when this fades out, it fades out really pretty and then we're just having to tone it until her roots get really grown out. So since she doesn't want to be too blonde, I am going to be leaving quite a bit of negative space but taking very thin slices here. I want to make sure that my slices are see-through enough to where I get really clean and even lift. Some of the things that I wanted to uh, be cautious of though was her color that's in between, um, that has grown out, that's in between her previous highlights. And then seeing how that might lift against her natural so when I'm done with the foils sometimes what I'll do is I'll check the foils and let's say the ends are a little bit more stubborn than the root only because there's permanent color on it versus the hair that has virgin hair then sometimes I'll just pop the ends of these long foils into like a hair dryer um, and have them leaning back into it to kind of catch it up and that's another reason why I like to custom cut my foils. I like to attack each zone and it's a lot easier if the hair is laid flat on the foil with the product. So like let's say she had really stubborn color on the ends then I could tackle just the ends with a little bit of heat to kind of catch it up. Or let's say the ends were really fragile and I wanted a little bit of power just at the root. I could definitely just have the dryer right on top of her roots for a few minutes and let that catch up to the ends that might be lightening a little bit quicker. But that's another reason why I really like to custom cut these foils instead of folding up the hair um, with the lightener in the foil. I just find that it's a lot easier for me to tackle each zone of where there's different banding or virgin hair compared to where there's highlights. 
And as I'm going through her hair too, like I said before, she does have some previous highlights. So for her previous highlights, I noticed that they weren't super light. They did need to be lightened a little bit. So I am carefully picking out any previous highlights that she has and then hitting that with a weaker lightener. So for the liners that I'm using, I'm using Blonde Me um, primarily on the virgin and on the hair that has base color on it. But on the pieces that are already blonde, I am using a cream bleach, which I find is a lot more gentle and kind of lifts a bit slower. And I use that with six volume on the areas that already has been highlighted so you can see there i'm picking out the highlight and then applying the blonde me onto the area that has base color and then i will apply um, some cream bleach on the areas that have highlights right there and you can see the difference the cream bleach is white and the blonde me is more of a balloon tone um, and i find that doing it this way i don't have to um, resaturate in certain areas if I feel like I've uh, if I miss the highlights or anything like that I feel like it is the hair is able to lift at the same pace and just makes it a lot more even opposed to leaving out those highlights and letting them be darker than the rest and you know I could have definitely done a different developer um for the virgin hair the base color and the highlights but the reason why i stayed with the same bleach and developer with the virgin hair and the base color area is because the base color area most of the time i usually will uh tell my clients that base color does make their hair a bit more stubborn but in this case she has a lighter base color than her natural hair color so sometimes when the base color is about like a level or two lighter um, i find that it lifts about the same or not much of a difference to virgin hair when you're highlighting it but this only applies if the base color is lighter than the virgin hair and um but if the base color was darker i might have used something a little bit weaker on the virgin hair because a darker base color compared to or a base color that is the same level as the virgin hair or even darker can be a lot more stubborn to lifting and i might have used something that was stronger in the areas that had base color opposed to the areas that were just virgin So when I did our consultation with her, um, I had asked her if she wanted the front lighter because as you can see here, her front does have more gray than it does in the back. And that's totally normal. I feel like most people who have gray have like kind of like a natural money piece around the hairline. And I believe maybe because those hairs are a little bit finer, um, so they just are a bit lighter and she told me she just wanted something more on the natural side so i did a weave and then um like a few weaves back to back like baby lights around the hairline to kind of give the very natural effect of a money piece but nothing that was going to be too chunky or too harsh around her face um, as this grows out and fades out too And then after those small weaves, I am connecting that front um, detailed weaves with the back with just some slices. But because the front is supposed to be gradually a little bit lighter, I am making the slices spaced a little bit closer together and then gradually having the pattern of the spacing a little bit further apart as you go towards the back of the head. And I generally like to do that so it gives the effect that the front does get a little bit lighter, just as the sun would lighten the front a little bit more um, naturally on somebody. So I'm gonna connect these sides by doing two baby lights um, to again create a very natural lighter front. Sorry, this part is a little bit cut off, um, but you can see that I just did two weaves about this um, 
same weave pattern and then again I'm just picking out those previous highlights and then um, only applying on the areas that are a little bit darker and after I do those two hairline um, weaves right at the side of her head I'm gonna connect that front and the back by doing a weave above the ear and this one I do like to generally weave it I normally don't slice this area just to kind of give it a softer blend and just tie everything together from the front and back but after this weave I do continue my slicing pattern up on the sides there and the spacing on the sides since this, is, since this area is going to be below the area of where she parts her hair I do leave a little bit more dimension here um, to make her feel like sh it's more natural and to avoid making her feel too blonde And the spacing is pretty similar to the back and making sure that my slices are nice and see-through to get a really nice clean even lift there and I'm just gonna continue doing this same pattern all the way up till I reach the top of the mohawk that I first initially did from the back to the front And like I said before, I did pop her ends into the dryer for a little bit and kept an eye on it. Um, whenever I put my clients under the dryer, I always put it on like medium heat, nothing too hot or anything. Um, because since her foils are long, the ends of the foils sometimes don't catch the body heat as much as it would at the root. So I like to encourage that as well um, by just popping the ends into the dryer to... Um, help with the lift but i do check every like five minutes or so on the foils and just keep rotating that dryer according to what is lifting um, a little bit slower and whether that's the ends or the root um, i will alternate where the heat is positions uh, according to the foils So before we get into toning, I wanted to share with you guys what the hair looked like when it was ready to be washed out. I feel like this is a really important visual to see, um, especially when working with like grays or ashy tones to uh, show you guys what it takes to even grab these type of colors because sometimes when um, people do ash tones, and they're not able to achieve that really ash tone it's because they haven't lifted the hair light enough so i just wanted to share with you guys what it looks like and what the hair should um, how light it should be to catch somewhat of these ash tones and you know some of her pictures did show more of like a gray tone to the highlights but because of her hair history this is how light she was able to really get and i did let her know in the consultation that it was going to take us a few sessions to get her to really her goal but this ideally isn't as light as it should be to get to some of the photos that she showed me i mean today what we can do is get her to like kind of like a really nice mushroomy ash brown tone but overall you can see there's still about like i would say that you can see there's some level eights in there and more level nines and ideally for gray tones you should be a level nine and ten um, but since this is the lightest that her hair can take because of her color history her previous highlights and all of that i really wasn't about to damage her hair or over process it but i was happy enough that it was even able to get as light as it was so that we could do somewhat of an ash tone and somewhat of a variation to the photos that she showed me. So right now I am going in with her shadow root and since her highlights 
or primarily slices, I always like to do a shot of root because I feel like it will blur out those lines perfectly. And for her shot of root, I'm using a level 6 ash, which is a level 6 that has more of a blue undertone to it. Um, this level 6-1 is very controlled in the sense that it, I don't have to worry about it uh, turning to blue or mistakenly turning my highlights green. It's a very safe tone for her roots. And then after this, I will be applying her gray ash toner once I have fully applied this to her root. And during this application, I always like to start in the back taking vertical sections and I usually apply about like an inch, a little less than an inch for the shadow root and I will apply this in the back and go from the center all the way to one ear and then go back to the center and take it all the way to the next ear and then finish off by rooting the sides. And sometimes I will leave out the hairline um, just depending on what the client's goal is or what they're lifted to. So in this case, I did leave out her hairline and I'm going in with the lighter gray ash tone right now. So I am applying that lighter ash tone on the mid and then as that I'm doing that, um, my assistant is applying a very tiny tiny baby root to the hairline just to kind of blur out any lines but we're not rooting the front as much as we did in the back because I want the front to give the feel that it is a bit lighter in the front so for her toner we're gonna be doing a mixture of my favorites which is the silver Violet and Moonstone from Pulp Riot and I do mix that with 6 volume. I find that these toners are probably like the perfect toners to use when doing any type of grays or silvers because they don't really have a background tone which is like sometimes that tannish tone that a lot of demi uh, permanents or uh, their toners might have. So I like it because it's able to tone out a lot of the brass without darkening the uh, highlights too much. Alrighty guys, so here is the finish look. I was really happy with the way that this turned out. You can see even though she didn't lift as light as level 9 and 10 in some areas, it still toned her really, really well and blends so well with her gray pattern. I didn't use any permanent color to blend her roots at all. That is a mixture of highlights and her natural gray pattern. So when this grows out, it is going to fade out more on the blonde side and she will need a toner maybe a little bit quicker um, than most clients. But I would say after her first session with me, this is really close to her goal and I am super confident that as she comes in, and we do touch-ups that it will only get better from here and she was really happy with it and I loved the way that this just complimented her and just made her look so much younger. Alrighty guys, that is it for this week's episode. Thank you guys so much for watching and tuning in and as always, I will talk to you guys next week.